Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Beyond Train Podcast. I'm your host, Leo Dalton. Uh, we're going to have a very cool episode today. Uh, this is something that I'm learning about more and more as we go. Um, I think this is going to tie in really well with everything that we've been talking here now, um, especially with the train, especially with health in general. I'm really looking forward to this podcast. We have a great guest on. I think he has very accurate perspective on the topic we're going to talk about today, uh, which of course we really appreciate here. So uh, we have Paul Leendurst on today and uh, it's going to be a great chat. So Paul, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Thanks for the invitation. Glad to be here. Yeah, definitely. So I always start the episodes off with a general question. I ask the guest, what is health? Ah, what is health? Okay. (laughs) That's a good question. Hmm. I would say when you're this vehicle that we've been given to look after works as it's supposed to, you know, and it's, it's not giving us signs that something we're doing in our life is out of harmony with love or what supports life. So health is not having any signs appearing that we're moving in the wrong direction. Wow. Very nice. Wow. Beautiful. Um, yeah, signs. And I, 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 you know, I don't think that this should be reduced to necessarily the absence of symptoms either. Right. Because I think signs can come in, in many different ways. I don't know if you would agree with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, our body gives us symptoms. Yeah. And then life gives us signs. So yeah, when we're moving in the wrong direction, then we're going to get symptoms and or signs. Yeah. And what I, and I, I call that how I look at that is I think that that's um, a re, that indicates that we're actually supported in this reality. There's there's something guiding us and supporting us that doesn't interfere with our free will. You know, because we're we're always making our choices based on our desires, based on our belief systems, based on our fears, or the opposite, our passions and our inspirations. And we can just go in potentially any direction. And if we start to go in a direction that isn't good for us, then we start to get these symptoms and signs. And that to me indicates that we are in a world where we are supported, but not controlled. Yeah. You know, I can't help but think that we get signs. You know, I guess you could kind of break it down, right? Because I feel like you get signs when you're on the right track too. You know, I feel like you get these messages and these indications too, like, Um, And even if we could classify symptoms as feelings, um, you know, when you're healthy, you feel really good too. You feel energized and motivated and, you know, all of these, this, you feel aligned, you feel like you're doing the right thing. So um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but. Oh, I'm so glad you point out the positive side of the coin too. Yeah. I mean, then because everything's working, it it actually feels good and i think what actually happens is good emotions like happiness and feeling at ease and at peace and and so on are the result of health they they just happen automatically we don't have to try to use our mind or affirmations to try to create feelings of goodness they just come as a result of being healthy and with regards to signs same thing the doors open for us, things work out, there's synergistic relationship dynamics, there's synchronicities that just keep supporting us and life feels good when we're healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. I, uh, I really appreciate your perspective on that because uh, it's, it's interesting how you get a different, slightly different point of view from everyone that comes on on what health means and um, I just think it's so so valuable and I think it gives us a great great place to start at least so uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about disease we're going to talk about cancer um, I'm really looking forward to this we haven't really dove into this topic in depth so I really look forward to hearing your perspective on it and maybe I can just kind of open the floor for you to to share your thoughts and, and philosophy surrounding that and um, we can take it from there. 
Okay, well, I want to get right into one of the most important things uh, to me about cancer uh, with regards to what I strongly believe to be the truth. But before I throw that truth bomb out there, I just want to give a little bit of backstory and some perspective Mm -hmm. here. But I've been working with people with cancer focused on the root cause of cancer. That's the only focus like, uh, and resolving it, identifying what it is and resolving it. Then I have not been focused on destroying cancer, either traditionally, of course, because like I'm not an oncologist or anything, but also I've not been focused on destroying cancer in any form of alternative way, <clears throat> because the alternative way is to strengthen our immune system so that it can destroy cancer. And just to save time for lots of reasons, starting about 13 years ago or so, I decided, like I I just sort of realized the war on cancer, whether whether traditional or alternative, is not going to address the root cause, right? Like, I mean, the root cause of cancer is not because we haven't been juicing. So if we have cancer, we start juicing, that's not, it doesn't really quite make sense that that's gonna solve the problem because that had nothing to do with the reason it, it appeared. Sure. Well, especially once we start talking about the root cause. So I've been working with people with cancer for a long time. I lived with people for a month at a time that had cancer stage three and four. I've had all kinds of clients that had first tried everything they could possibly try to heal. I mean, both traditional and alternative. And I now teach the root cause of cancer. I've I've been, so many things have been revealed to me about what's really going on with cancer. And many years in, uh, for the first few years of <clears throat> this work, I believed now, now I'm going to throw out the truth bomb, what I obviously believe to be the truth. And I, and I want, I, I really think this is important to deeply consider and have a very open mind to. I used to believe that there's multiple causes to cancer. I used to think there's a whole slew of physical causes to cancer. And that's, that's generally what mainstream believes today. I mean, um, recently I saw someone teaching on social media that meat eating meat causes cancer. (laughs) I mean, just, there's so many things that I I remember maybe 15 years ago, I, I read a study that there's a link associating wearing a bra to, uh, causing breast cancer because it restricts the bras, the breasts, you know, so there's some, some logic to that. But so the general belief is that there's many, many, many causes of cancer. And what I want to share today is that there's not many causes of cancer. In fact, there's just one cause. And that's usually hard for people to digest. But and and I mean, you know, so what I what I just want to share is to really deeply consider that possibility, because that is what I have observed in these 13 years of working with people with cancer directly on the root cause. And what I have discovered through my own observation is that the cause of cancer, there's just one cause and it's psycho emotional stress that has become suppressed because we've not been able to figure out the the challenges like the challenge, like people will encounter stresses in their life. Um, And what we do as human beings when we can't resolve the stress is we, one option, which is common, it's sort of an instinct, is to just begin sort of trying to let it go, trying to disconnect from it and just move forward. And every time we do that, we suppress a little bit of ourselves psycho-emotionally. And that suppression is what causes cancer to form at some point. If there's enough, if it's intense enough, significant enough, that suppression causes, and I, and I explain all this as well. So there's a lot to learn here. This is like a whole new world for most people opening up to this potential reality, right? But there's explanations for all of this as well. So that's, that's the truth bomb that I wanted to throw in there. There's just one cause to cancer. And it's so important to take seriously because like, if we look at, I mean, for obvious reasons, if we want to really resolve cancer, we want to take control of our health. We got to understand what the actual cause of cancer is, right? So if we're looking in all these different places, that's not going to be helpful. And the war on cancer for a hundred years now has been looking obviously in the wrong place since you know today. There's there's no cure for cancer. All kinds of people die doing treatments. People die doing alternative things, right? Sadly, and I've lost people in my family to cancer. That's what got me into this years ago. 
but the war on cancer has been focused on just trying to figure out how to destroy cancer, you know, basically studying cancer cells, not people. That's been going on for a hundred years. Now there's an awakening happening. And, and like that started maybe a few decades al already where there's an alternative thing that has grown. And this is good. I mean, okay, let's focus on health here. You know, let's focus on detoxifying our bodies. Let's fast, let's switch to organic food. Of course, like all these things are good. And, but so that's progress big time. And that that's moving in the direction of actual health rather than just trying to destroy cancer. But I've had many people like I've said, hire me to do, you know, to work on their healing, um, especially since uh, 2020, when I've gone online with my work. And I have many, many examples of people that have been focused on alternative things like fasting for 30 days, five times in a row, uh, juicing, you know, doing special, like consuming special supplements, doing intense detoxification protocols and so on. And still they're not healing. And so for a variety of reasons, and after many years of this, I've concluded that the actual cause is psychoemotional and now I can track the cause as well. So when I work with clients, I can figure out the root cause with them in one session. I offer root cause session today. And I teach the root cause work, which is how to get deep into those suppressed parts of ourselves and start actually transforming that so that we can release it and allow our body to heal. And that's, that's actually how cancer truly heals and disappears, which is actually possible. Cancer can actually just disappear. It's not true that cancer just grows out of control when we resolve the root cause, cancer disappears. And that's what I've also observed now as well. And I have, um, I'm accumulating more testimonials of clients reversing their cancer, no treatments, no alternatives, just doing the root cause work. So there's a lot of reasons why I'm like sharing this, it's, but it's oftentimes intense for people. And there's all kinds of associations with cancer, you know, like, well, what about EMFs? It's associated with cancer. What about smoking cigarettes? It's associated with cancer. You know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people that develop lung cancer and there's a lot of people that smoke, but that doesn't mean smoking causes cancer. And then you can look at all these exceptions, like George Burns, the famous comedian smoked his whole life, like a chimney, laughed his whole life too. generally had a good life. He never developed lung cancer. I've had clients that come to me, they have lung cancer. They say, Paul, I don't understand. I've never smoked in my life. I'm not exposed to polluted air. How can I possibly have lung cancer? It's because it has nothing to do with cigarettes. It has nothing to do with smoking. It's completely, totally psycho-emotional. Um, so there was like, yeah, maybe I should take a pause there because I'm just going like sentence after sentence here. <laughs> no, no, that, that was, that was great. You know, I, I had so many things pop up in my mind there. The first one is, you know, you hear the stories of, of people who get their, their, diagnosis or their prognosis they're told you know you have x amount of time to live they're not going to do treatment and they go and they quit their job and they move to europe for a month before they die or they you know they start living out their dream and then their cancer goes away and they never die you know so that's that's a exactly. reoccurring story that you hear right and i think that's always fascinated me now it's either complete remission or it's a death sentence because those those words can have powerful effects on an individual, you know. Absolutely, um, yeah. But it's like a spell yeah, I mean, cast on a person. Absolutely, it's like a, it's like a curse. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a curse, or could be a blessing as well. <laughs> you know, depending yeah, it depends, on the nature of the person. Depends right? what it depends you do with it. You got to say absolutely no to a spell or a curse like that. Like, no way, yeah. I'm going to heal myself. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah you got to take control of your own future. Don't let someone else decide. Yeah. yeah. You know, when I've been studying uh, the Bagelson's work, um, Adam and Josh Bagelson, of course, all based off their father, Harvey Bagelson, you know, they have a large emphasis on the emotional component as well, and not just of cancer, but of all disease. And, you know, something that they talk about is that the emotional infraction, the scar, is what allows the body to hold on to toxicity you know so unless you have that emotional component to the body 
your body physically cannot store toxins, whether it be heavy metals, whether it be glyphosate, whether it be whatever it may be. If you're energetically aligned and emotionally aligned properly and you're dealing with these emotions, you're letting them go, you know, you have nothing repressed, you know, the body cannot hold on to these physical toxins. And I think that's interesting, you know, especially with the smoking, you're saying, well, the natives smoked tobacco, like all the time, every day. And they've lived, they lived a long, long time. You know, obviously a lot of the stories that I've heard when working with them and learning from them was that, you know, they lived longer than 125 years, way longer than that. And they may, you know, people may say that, you know, they're a primitive society. They don't know time, whatever. I'm like, <laughs> they, they certainly knew time. You know, they had a great understanding of the natural cycle. So I'm sure they knew how many years somebody lived and these stories passed down. But anyways, I just think that's, that's really interesting that it's whole, like that the emotional component is, is holding on to this is what allows the body to hold on to the toxicity. I don't know if you've, if you've considered that at all either. Or... Well, that, uh, that makes sense to me and that would resonate with my explanation of cancer and, and how cancer forms, why it grows. Because um, when we have psychoemotional stress, it creates tension in our energy field. And our energy field is a very real thing, even though we can't touch it and it's not a physical thing. Our energy field is what contains our emotions. So obviously the energy of anger is a very real thing. Like a few people are going to disagree with that. The energy of fear is a real thing. The energy of guilt, of shame, of happiness, of joy, of, of freedom is all energy and, it, and it's permeating our body and it flows. And when it's flowing, we're healthy. When it gets constricted because of suppressed emotions, for example, or because of chronic psychoemotional stress, then our energy field starts to get impacted because we're being impacted emotionally. And that causes constrictions, which affect our physical body. That energy field affects our physical body in a massive way. So if there's a restriction in our energy field, it will show up as a restriction in our physical body as well. And that restriction slows the movement of the physical stuff in that area. And our body, for example, produces, produces um, waste products of its own. So we can have a completely clean, perfect, holistic lifestyle where we're not consuming toxics. We're not putting toxic body care on our skin. We're not smoking cigarettes. We're not breathing polluted air. It can just be perfectly clean. But our body still actually contains its own waste products, right? Because of our cellular metabolism. And these aren't chemicals, but they, but they, they, they are wastes. And so if there's a restriction in our energy field, then yeah, that waste can start to accumulate there. And, and, uh, many problems can accumulate there. You know, our, our cells cannot receive the nutrition that they need to thrive. Our cells can't receive oxygen. And they also can't eliminate the waste products. If you add in toxic exposure, consuming fast food, whatever, pharmaceutical drugs and so on, then those will start to become part of the picture as well. And you can get, uh, you can get into a situation where you've got this one part of the body, which is where cancer grows, that is becoming, that is very compromised. And yeah, there could be more toxins there. And that's where cancer grows, where that restriction is in our energy field. So that makes sense to me. That fits right into with what I'm sharing about cancer. Yeah. Oh, their work is is mind blowing, and I've not heard of them. Can you say their name again? I'll check them out. Har the Biggleson, the Biggleson brothers, Adam and Josh Biggleson. Yeah, and their father did did a lot of amazing work, uh, Dr. Harvey Biggleson, and a, a lot of it is based on on microscopy, on dark field microscopy. And within these microscopic pictures that you have to take pictures of the blood, you know, you can see scarring in these. It only shows up in dark field microscopy because it's unadulterated samples of, of blood. And so you can see the scarring happening and the accumulation of, of toxicity. You can see the, the immune properties. You can see the pleomorphic cycle. You can see the, you know, the, 
whether it be a fungi, a fungal cell or bacteria around these scars and it they visualize the entire thing under dark field microscopy it's absolutely mind-blowing and I, I you would love their their course honestly you would love their their work in general it's really really mind-blowing um and i i when i listen to you speak on uh daniel Reuter's podcast you know that it was just aligning you know i kind of thought i was like oh these guys have got to be connected but now you say i'm like that kind of just says a lot i, I don't know if, w about your philosophy here and about their philosophy because you guys kind of came to these conclusions the same in different ways but you came to the same conclusion so um amazing it's amazing stuff yeah yeah it sounds so, really similar i'll definitely check them out yeah yeah so when so in the body you know when when we have the cancer you know maybe you could talk a little bit about how it how it manifests like you know what is what are we seeing with a tumor, right? What, what's the purpose, you know, maybe what's your philosophy behind that? Love to hear that. Okay. Well, you know, in the past, um, in 2012, I, I wrote a book, it's called the root cause of cancer. And that's when I, you know, when I was just beginning, well, I had been researching and focused on this for a couple of years. Then I wrote my book. So in 2012, my theory was that stress causes cancer, which is the same today, obviously. Uh, and I was still open to physical causes of cancer then. And so I was teaching about how to clean up our diet, how to change our lifestyle, and then how to, you know, uh, deal with the stresses in our life. And I felt back then, I strongly believed that there is this real possibility that cancer was a survival, a biological survival response from our body. And I believe that for many years. And there's other theories like that too, like a commonly known theory um, that's different, but it's the same kind of concept that it's a biological response by the body is one by German New Medicine uh, from the Dr. Hammer. Uh, but, but since then I've learned far more. I've worked with so many people with cancer that my old theory I had to drop and the theory of German New Medicine is I definitely disagree with as well. It's not a biological response. So normally what happens in our body is that we have biological responses to insults. Like if we were to be exposed to chemicals or something in fast food that, that let's say damage our intestines or damage our liver, then our biological response is to cause inflammation. Our body creates the inflammation. Like it knows what it's doing. It creates more blood flow. It goes in, it starts cleaning up the mess, cleaning up the damage, regenerating cells. This is called the inflammatory process. And essentially behind any symptom that appears in our body, whether it's a migraine or rash or anything, it in, it's related to the inflammatory response. But cancer is very different. Cancer is the result of not something physical. So the example I was just giving was for physical cancer is caused by something that is, you know, invisible, which is our emotions and our thoughts. So our psycho-emotional stresses are sort of invisible. They, they appear based on facial expressions, of course, and all of that. They affect our physiology. Um, so when we have psycho-emotional stress and it becomes repressed and we get stuck energy in our energy field of the body. And that stuck energy, then because of how it interfaces with our physical body, our physiology, our body becomes compromised, as I said before, and it, it literally begins to suffer. That compromised state, because it's chronic, begins to compromise the cells in that location, nowhere else in the body. Like people can have cancer and they're just like, what the heck's going on? I have a healthy lifestyle. All of a sudden I have cancer, you know, in this one spot. What's going, it's because that's where the constriction is in the ener energy field that's tied to our psycho-emotional reality. So that spot is actually, it begins to enter into a death state. It's, it's truly dying. It would be like tying an elastic around your finger. There's nothing wrong with the body. And the inflammation that would occur around your finger because it's suffocating there because of the, the restriction, that inflammation is a biological response from our body to try to solve the problem, 
like it's it's trying to fix the issue but the issue itself is the elastic and the body cannot actually solve that problem it, it can't right you got to remove the elastic so we can be in this inflammatory response chronically, chronically, chronically. And then if we conclude that the body knows what it's doing, it's wise, it's got everything under control, we would be, that's a very dangerous belief system that's actually inaccurate. It's like true in one sense that the body knows how to heal, but the, but the root cause has to be addressed for the body to be able to carry out its healing process and, and su successfully. So if you think of the elastic, like our psycho-emotional stress that has become repressed, which has caused the energy restriction, that is what's causing the, the death state in that part of our body. And that's what has to be resolved. That death state leads to the production. So this is what I strongly believe today, Ble leads to the production of fungal cells. So fungus begins to appear literally inside a part that part of our body because that that the physical tissue of that part of our body is dying it truly is dying and fungus grows there because that's what fungus does it grows on dead and dying things too and its job is to digest physical material back into the soil and years ago i spoke at the cure to cancer conference in san diego california there's a bunch of other speakers there one person there that I really resonated with was um, Doug Kaufman, who, who wrote the book, and he has a tremendous amount of knowledge and research on his books called The Fungal Link. And he was teaching and he really strongly believed that cancer is a fungus and like without a doubt, cancer is a fungus. And his research is compelling. And all of his reasons for saying that is compelling. So he was saying, you know, you got to clean mold out of your house. You got to get the mycotoxins out of the grains. And like, he's a very knowledgeable guy. But I said to him, I disagree with you, Doug. Uh, fungus isn't the cause of cancer. And he's like, Paul, I'm positive. Like, I'm, there's a lot of reasons why I'm concluding this. And I'm like, well, n yeah, but what I've seen is that the cause of cancer is stress. So him and I loved each other's, like he agreed that what I'm saying is valuable. And we were, we got along well, but we didn't agree on this thing. So as years went by, then I started to realize that what I just explained, that the energy field is becomes constricted because of psycho-emotional stress that becomes repressed. The energy field compromises our physical body, and that invites fungus to appear in that part of our body and begin growing there, trying to consume our dead and dying tissue. So Doug and I were both right in important ways. And if we combine our theories together, then it completes what I believe today to be the complete picture. So can cancer is not caused by fungus. So I was correct back then. The, the cause of cancer is stress. And, but um, cancer is a fungus. So Doug was correct back then that cancer is a fungus. So you put it together and then it brings the understanding. And what's really interesting is if you, you know, like a, a known fact is that when surgeons remove tumors, especially bigger tumors, if you cut them open and look inside, they're necrotic. So it's just dead tissue in the center. And that's because that part of the body died and the fungus is there consuming it. So it's consumed that part of the body. And then the other thing that's interesting is the tumor can't, doesn't just keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing like the, the kind of mentality or the belief system is that that's what cancer does, that cancer just grows and grows and grows. But, but actually when a lump appears in the body, it doesn't just keep growing. It reaches a certain size. Yes. And then it just stops and it just sits there and it doesn't change. I've had clients share with me. I've had, you know, with breast cancer, for example, they've had a lump in their breast for two years up to seven years. Actually, now I have a client that shared with me, they've had a lump in their breast for 12 years. So cancer doesn't just, and so, so you see cancer can't actually grow outside of that area because what's outside of that area is the energy field is actually still moving. It's not stuck. When we have psychoemotional stress, our energy field doesn't get stuck all over. It just gets stuck in key regions. And I explained this in my training today because this is related to how our nervous system is set up, how our body uh, like functions. 
our, our, we have our brain and we have our spinal cord that comes down and then it branches out into various nerve centers and our spinal cord and nerves carry impulses that have specific qualities, characteristics. If we're stressed about money, it will affect a certain part of our body, not just random areas. Actually, it will constrict a specific part of our energy field in a specific location. If we're stressed about love, it's a completely different topic, like love and money, two different things, right? If we're stressed about um, something sex related, it's another different topic. So this is this is all this became revealed. This was revealed to me over all these years working with people on the root cause of cancer. I started to notice patterns. Every time someone has breast cancer, it's the exact same cause. Exact. There's no exception. Now it's unique because everyone's life is a little bit different, like is very different. But the theme of stress is always the same, always the same. Like breast cancers, every single time without exception, related to personal sacrifice, related to love. Every time, and there's no exception. I just say that confidently. They can just, people can go test this, you know, to see. You know, every time someone has lung cancer, every time without exception, it's caused from unresolved grief. So there's a loss that has occurred in some way. The, you know, a very obvious kind of loss, it, loss is someone dying that we loved. But we can also lose things in other types of losses can be significant that aren't about someone dying. So that always causes lung cancer if the loss is not successfully processed psycho-emotionally. Now, here's where we get into the issue with cancer and why I'm so adamant to share and teach that the only cause of cancer is psycho-emotional stress, because we really got to get this. This really needs to be understood. So it can be incorporated into all the holistic lifestyle and all the different treatments and stuff like that. Sure. You know, so that we can be like, okay, let's get healthy and use all the different things that support. So the root cause work and the root cause of cancer needs to really be understood by mainstream. And I think one day it will be by mainstream. Like there's just a small handful of people that's just gradually growing. Uh, it's so important because once it's understood deeply, then it reveals the actual, uh, many of the factors that are contributing to what ultimately leads so many people in life into chronic stressful situations, like chronically stressful situations that they don't know how to resolve. And it really starts to, ju it, it, it's just going to, there's so many things that have to change in our world like range it right from the beginning, like how babies are handled after birth, you know, cause that begins to affect our subconscious and our belief systems. And, you know, a lot of times cancer is related to unresolved trauma in family lineages. You know, every time if, if the grandparents had stress yeah. that they did not actually resolve inside, they will pass that stress on to their kids. Then those kids become adults and, they, if they don't have that resolved, they're going to pass it on to their kids. And what's happening is this is why it appears like that uh, genetics are somehow related to cancer, but cancer has nothing to do with our genes. It has everything to do with our family lineage though. Um, so like, for example, there's a BCR gene that is associated with breast cancer, but I've also had clients come to me and say, I don't understand, Paul, I don't have the gene, but I have the cancer. And then of course, there's people that have the gene, but don't have the cancer. So it's, it's just all these associations. The one factor that is actually the cause is the psycho-emotional stress. So really, once we start addressing this, doing the root cause work, and it's not easy, it's not easy to address this stuff because we have to figure out how to create a world that doesn't have so much psycho-emotional pain. Yeah. You know, so when, when the root cause work is really understood, life can get better because then the motivation for the average person or for humanity will be about making life better on a psycho emotional level and mm -hmm. beginning to really look into what are all the facts that make it worse and what are all the facts that make it better and we can drop such a heavy emphasis on physical things right because that's what the emphasis is with cancer like today one in two people are developing cancer and 26,000 people die a day of cancer. 
despite all these efforts to address cancer on a physical level, right? And, and the rate of cancer has been growing and growing over all these decades. Like one in two people is pretty high. And the other one in two people out there that aren't developing cancer, that doesn't mean that they're healthy either. There's people dying of heart disease and stroke and all kinds of stuff. So this is all related to psychoemotional stress. And of course, if you start juicing, or of course, if you go to chemotherapy, that is not going to change our psycho-emotional reality in any real, like substantial and valuable way, you know, you know, so to speak, like we've, we've got to really get into the root cause work and change reality from, like I said, the, from, from birth onwards. So we got to start understanding parenting styles. We got to start understanding the school system and how that impacts children. We got to understand um, how advertisements affect us and movies affect us. We really have to start learning and focusing more on like what really creates happiness in our heart and what really creates purpose in our lives and what really, and what love really is like how we can actually create more love in our life because happiness, purpose, love, freedom, that's not stress. You know, what stress is, is anger, resentment, and all the other stuff. And so the, the truth is, and this is why in the pandemic, the rate of cancer, according to many experts, has just exploded. The incidence of cancer just exploded. Why? Because of the psychoemotional stress related to the pandemic. Because of all the family feuds, the fights in relationships, the, the fear, the massive fear, which right, right is an emotion. And so a lot of people think that it's because of the vaccine, but that's a physical thing. So I'm certainly not saying the vaccine is safe. <laughs> like, I mean, that is not what I'm saying, but, but, and, and it has its own sources of damage on the body, but the cause of cancer isn't the vaccine. It's another association. The cause of cancer is all the guilt tripping, the fear, the regrets, the resentments, these are heavy, heavy things. So humanity has to wake up. Like the real great awakening, I'd like to say, is about love. It's about psycho-emotional well-being. It's not just about, um, like, I mean, it's important to start recognizing all the errors and flaws and the con artists and all the corruption and shit that's actually out there in governments and the, 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 the lacking in the medical uh, world, you know, like just throwing drugs at symptoms like this is not, we need to go deeper. And when we get deeper, if you want to go all the way, then start learning the root cause of cancer, because that's going to take you all the way, then you've got to understand the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And when I started doing this work 15 years ago, I had no idea <laughs> that I was actually jumping into this. At first, I thought I was like, oh, I'm going to master all these physical things, I'm going to know the best supplements in the world and all of that, right? But then I started to realize there's something more complicated and it's the psycho-emotional. And then there's something even more complicated, which is the spiritual. So we got to go right into the spiritual realm too. And that, that's a whole different realm. Like sure. what, like what created this world? What created us? Um, what, what is God? What, what is love? How do we define love? Uh, you know, and, and on and on there. And these are huge, huge, huge topics that, affect our psycho-emotional well-being because belief systems you know what is a belief system where does it come from what's our subconscious versus our conscious mind etc so the root cause work I, I think is important and um yeah obviously it's my passion it has been for many years it's been one heck of a difficult journey at times as well it's not you know this is an intense topic and sensitive topic and um um but every time I've decided, okay, that's enough, then I'm like, wait, someone just healed. Okay, keep going. And then I've also had lumps appear in my body, you know, and had to fit and realize and because of this work, I knew why there's a lump in my rectum. You know, I knew why there's a lump, multiple lumps on my head. And it was actually when I was working with someone with brain cancer, I had the same similar lumps on her head. So I knew. And so I've had to do, I've had to heal myself. Uh, so this, this work is just incredibly important. So I'm grateful that you could feel some value in this and have me on your podcast so I can share. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can hear the passion 
behind your words as well. So it's, it's, it's quite obvious. I want to open that up a little bit, what you just said about uh, your development, if you don't mind talking sure. about it a little bit. Um, you know, was it, you said that you were working with somebody with similar thing, were you taking on that emotional stress? Were you kind of, were you taking that on? Because um, I study psychotherapy currently and a big thing is like, like vicarious trauma is a big topic that, you know, you have to really protect yourself on like when you are working with people. Mm -hmm. Well, cer certainly. So that, that wasn't the cause of my lumps on my head, but I was certainly when you're working, when you're doing this work with people and you're getting into the stressors in their lives and the fears and what's happened in their childhood and, and you know, then you can, you can potentially start to take it on yourself, especially to the degree that you're not familiar with that kind of pain, or if you have that pain unresolved inside yourself. So for example, if, if you're, if someone, if you, if you have a, um, a, a health practitioner working with someone that has sexual trauma and that health practitioner also has sexual trauma from their past and it's not healed. Then if you're working with that person and they start telling you what happened, you can become triggered and can become very emotional and off center yourself. And then you can, you know, take on vicariously their stuff. Um, so that's certainly true. But why I had lumps wasn't related to what I was taking on from my client. It was related to a lot of emotional pain that I had occurred that had occurred in my life. It was related to a relationship ending that was very complex. It was huge, huge deal to me. And I did not know at that time how to um, grow, how to evolve. This is what I teach today is like how to grow through stress and evolve our soul through the challenge without getting stuck in it. So the vast majority of us, of human beings, will get stuck in the stress and not know how to actually deal with it because we're not trained how to, we're not even prepared for life really. Like once, like I've got lots to say about this, but like we're not, the school system doesn't teach us and most of our upbringings does not prepare us for how to handle stresses in life related to sex or stress and challenges that are related to fear and money. Uh, um, you know, we're, and, and instead, oftentimes how we're raised, it, it will set us up for stress actually occurring in our life. So it can, it's easy to get stuck. And if we get stuck psychoemotionally, then we get stuck energy in our, in our body and that causes cancer. So that was why I had lumps. And at that time I could not resolve the issue, but obviously I did because I'm here and I don't have lumps anymore. <laughs> so it's, it's a big story to explain, but I, I teach, I teach, I share a lot in my training with my level one practitioners with level two. I share a whole, like a large amount of case histories and, and stories of how and why cancer forms in practical examples and the processes that I teach of how to reverse the stuck energy, how to heal ourselves. So that's a key thing to understand is that they're searching for a cure is not the answer searching outside of ourselves is not going to there's the solution isn't out there. It's has to come from within ourselves. And that's a, a really important factor to be aware of in um, both prevention and healing. So we need to, we real what we really need to do is we need to gain the tools, the psychoemotional tools, the processing tools. We need to gain the knowledge about how our body actually works. And we need to, develop certain spiritual strengths and so that we actually grow through life um and that's if anything that's the cure but that's not so easy to get you can't just you have to you have to really invest yourself in that you know so all the the trauma that's unhealed in lineages and family lineages and all the trauma that any of us carry um we either just remain a victim of the trauma and let it continue to affect our life in a detrimental way, or if we really want to access our potential for happiness and purpose and thriving in life and enjoying the blessings and the beauty of this world and, and, you know, reaching our potential as a human, we got to take responsibility for everything that's inside of us that is 
stressful or unhealed and transform it. Yeah. That's, that's what the solution to cancer is that, you know, that's easy. That's not so easy. That's the hard work. A large task. Yeah. Large that, task. That's the real solution. Yeah. But it's worth it and it actually works, you know? So I have testimonials of people reversing their cancer, you know, because it actually works and that's real healing. Cancer doesn't come back when you do that work when you when you when, when it's healed in that way you can destroy cancer there are treatments out there that work sometimes sometimes you know um chemotherapy can just kill every single cell or you know based on a scan like cancer free based on the scan and then three months later the cancer spread it's come back it's worse than the first time because that's not addressing the root cause yeah you know? absolutely so it's worth it to do this work yeah Hundred percent. Obviously, right? Yeah. 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 And you know, I can hear the arguments. I can hear the arguments against um, what you're saying here. And but but I think if I could highlight one thing, you know, if someone were to say, you know, you know, the the overwhelming toxicity there's overwhelming toxicity, you know, this must be the cause, must be the cause. You know, I just think that that the logic behind it being an emotional cause if it's if it is if there is an emotional cause there is no physical component to it whatsoever it may manifest physically but it's it's purely emotional cause emotional healing the physical truly doesn't matter you know and um energy comes before biology is absolutely i love that statement that's exactly how it works energy comes before biology yeah a hundred percent of the time you see that and it, and it's with everything right there's um you know so so you connect it that way but um and i and i don't want to imply that there's no value in detoxifying our bodies you know and getting toxicity out because for example i've, I've tested this where if if i've tested my emotional well-being and if i go and eat some garbage like fast food whatever I will, it will affect me emotionally. I will feel less positive about my life. It'll, I'll be more inclined to feel emotions like depression or heaviness or, you know, like life is a challenge or whatever. So when we're eating vibrant food and we're free of toxins, then we're in a much better state. But that's still very different from suppression itself. And suppression itself doesn't come from eating toxic, like from toxicity in our body. Suppression comes from you know, our mother died and we have massive grieving pain and don't know how to actually process that and come and grow through, you know, that, that has nothing to do with toxicity. Right. So, so it's good to combine things, clean up, like address our lifestyle, but, but then get the deeper root cause work done too. So with interventions, you know, fasting is one of the things that I would have always thought is like, a great way to address cancer. Now I do, I don't want to completely abandon that. And the reason being is that I think fasting can have profound spiritual benefits. Yeah. You know, when I've, I've not fasted for long in my life, but I went through a period where I did want, like I did try a few fasts and you know, the spiritual connection and, and I was largely focused on that. So, you know, maybe that was just my bias, but you do hear this a lot is that fasting has this spiritual component to it. It does. I and agree. So, That's been my yeah, experience as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if anything, the fasting, you know, perhaps there are physical benefits to it uh, through detoxification, but perhaps those who have had results through fasting have had a greater psychological impact, you know, a greater spiritual connection through that as well. You know, that's just something Certainly. that came into my mind. Like, mm-hmm. um, and even I want to just maybe highlight and hear your thoughts on this. Somebody taking a sort of physical, maybe supplement or detox protocol or whatever it may be, you know, could the placebo effect have any sort of psycho, you know, I guess, I suppose it, it's, it wouldn't address the, it wouldn't address the suppressed emotion. I think that would probably be your answer, but exactly. Um, maybe you could just open that up a little bit. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, after doing this work for so long, I've really come to be, 
believe and through a lot of experiences that the our mind with regards to the power to heal us like placebo effect or or imagining ourselves healed it's not as powerful as it's thought to be like there's a lot of teachings out there like you got to heal with your mind you got to heal with your mind but the thing is our emotions are very different than our thoughts and emotions actually come first so you know if 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 you're if you're in a sit in a life reality that doesn't feel good it's the life reality that's causing you not to feel good not your thoughts so for example if if my dream in life is to um have uh you know uh, be a marine biologist because i'm just fascinated like and and thrilled and excited about whales and octopuses and manta rays and all this underwater world and that's where my heart is at but i'm working in let's i'm giving an extreme example i'm working in a factory <laughs> and you know and i'm and, and in that factory job working 12 hour shifts i feel like a small death is occurring inside my soul mm-hmm. now i can think all i want with positive affirmations and i can take like now let, let's say that causes a disease in my body i can think all i want positively with affirmations i'm happy i'm this i'm that but if i stay in that job i'm gonna die you know yeah. or or you know i'm, I'm not gonna start experiencing happy emotions so there's, there's there's only so much power with our mind so we can we can start being grateful for what like I could connect to, well, at least I'm not starving on the street and this job's paying for food, but that it's not going to touch the real issue. You know, it's, it's just a little bit beneficial in many cases. There's, there's way too much emphasis on the power of the mind. Um, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and, and it can actually lead to suppression. So we can be like, Oh no, no, I'm happy. I'm happy. Wait, yeah. are, do you feel happy? Or are you just saying you're happy from your mind? There's a very big difference, right? Like very big difference. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure how powerful the placebo effect can really is because there's, there's the truth and then there's what's an illusion, right? So, so if I ask someone, are you happy in your factory job? And they're like, yeah, I'm happy. That's an illusion. Like that's not the truth. It's, it's, it's just something we're wanting to be true, but it's not true. Um, yeah, there's certain things we just can't change, you know, because the, it's the truth. Um, mm. But there's but there's power in that. There, there's a reason there's such thing as the truth, because otherwise life would just be like a big pinball machine where anything and everything can happen. There's no rhyme or reason. But if there's truth that can be followed, then it's like the, there's an answer. There's a solution. There's really is a solution. It's not just a big guessing game. It's so like the truth is huge. Uh, to try to solve problems with placebo effects and affirmations and stuff. I'm not a fan of it really. Like, of course there's some value in it, but the root is the thing where like the root is where the meat is at. The root is where, you know, the truth is at. Well put. Very well put. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that perspective. Um, because, and you know, I just thought of Rudolf Steiner and his four bodies, you know, like the, the conscious, ego our thoughts that's well after the emotional body the emotional body is is consistent through with all animals you know all animals have our emo- an emotional body and i think that's really interesting um that is more it's 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 more deeply rooted right <laughs> right it's um, yeah so i just had that connection and yeah you know our our emotions are supposed to be our guidance system Right. But this gets interfered with and very heavily damaged because of the way society is structured today and has been for many decades. So, for example, um, if if I like a belief system can replace our emotional guidance system. Um, Let's say let's say I don't want to go to school as a little kid. Well, why? Because of an emotion. Like because I'm happy being free and playing. 
But then if someone comes in because of a belief system and says, well, you have to go to school, that's like moving us out of our emotional guidance system up into our head and forming a belief system. I have to, but wait, my emotion was just saying something different, but now you're saying I need to abandon the emotional for a thought or a belief. Yes. That's what you have to do. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing the connection here now with what you're saying about how we're, you know, we grow up and we're, we're, this is ingrained in us to ignore the emotional exactly. field. And that, this is why we're so prone to suppression. Well, the lights just went on for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then there's a problem too, where there's con artists and some corruption in the world where there's belief systems being in a, um, mal- a malintent kind of like um, intention to plant belief systems, knowing that they won't be good for us to then start to play with our emotions. So then we can be like, um, you know, we, we want to follow a certain path in life, but then we start to feel guilty about doing that. And the guilt is coming from a belief system. Hmm. So, so there's, there's like a, there's kind of a process, a journey to go through as we heal this all this stuff like doing this root cause work um because our emotions are supposed to be our guidance system but the more damaged and full of all kinds of false beliefs and stuff we are then we can actually have some emotions that guide us in the wrong direction absolutely yeah so we got to like sort it out clear it all out and then once you become like the more pure we become the more our emotions become the full the full on guide of our life the full on guide And then we're just checking things with our mind, like logic and rationale. Like, does this make sense? Um, Not from a fear-based place or from a belief system, just like it's, it's almost just like confirmation. But usually what happens is life is guided by our head. And that's a big problem. When, when our head is leading the show, then there's a good chance our emotions have been abandoned, like to some degree. And that's, that can be a big, big problem. Yeah, because emotions aren't bad in and of themselves, right? They're like you're mentioning here, it's the guidance system. So I think that's something that actually we talked a little bit about a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, it's come up a few times now that, you know, we shouldn't demonize our emotions either, right? Because even a fear response is useful in the right setting. You know, if you think uh-huh. of a more natural setting, you know, if you're about to get eaten by a lion or something, you know, it's a little... It's right. we, we gotta be point, right? we gotta have our emotional guidance system yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. and you know humanity because we've been i kind of have a theory here just based on some observations but humanity has been so disconnected from emotions for all sorts of complex reasons mm. that it's been getting worse over time and what has been growing over time is sort of a value in robotics, artificial intelligence. Um, For example, children, oftentimes many children are living in a different world in a video game. They're just they're not even in the earth plane anymore. They're just gone in some other kind of artificial fantasy world. And like, as we and, and then there's Elon Musk with the like starting to hook people right into you know, where your brain is actually hooked up to a computer, um, you know, we're getting into like matrix style, like matrix potential here, you know, where humans are no longer humans. They're just robots, you know, they're just a mind. And if, if you think about what a robot is, a robot does not actually have emotions. It has all kinds of thoughts, like we could maybe call it, like there's all this information and data that exists in the robot but there's no emotion. That's how we know that it's a robot. So how do we know that a human is a human because they have emotions? (laughs) And like, how do we know that life is beautiful and good because we feel beautiful and good emotions? So this is our guidance system. Um, So this is really a big problem. And 
because this has not been emphasized and dealt with correctly by humanity as a whole, this is why the rate of cancer today is one in two people. This is why there's so much suffering and loss. Because generationally, our psycho-emotional reality has been degrading and degrading and degrading. This is why childhood cancer is rising, teenage cancer is rising. Like this used to be unheard of, like a child having cancer. How does a child develop colon cancer or, you know, this, it's, this shouldn't be happening. It's because of generational stuff accumulating more and more in parents. Like if you have stress passed on to you as a child from your parents, now you're carrying their stuff. And then when you go forward in your life, you accumulate your own stress from your journey on top of it. Then if you have kids, you pass it on to them. So it gets worse with each generation. But uh, thankfully, I really believe we are in the Great Awakening, hence the reason why we're having discussions like this. And like, I mean, there is a massive awakening occurring and many big things are changing. Values are shifting and people are getting deeper into emotions, spirituality. Um, basically, like 2020 was like, okay, I can't trust anything anymore ever. <laughs> like now I have to just find out the truth. Like what is the truth of everything? It's like beautiful, perfect because the truth does exist, you know, and humanity has been living in the dark for too long. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was certainly a blessing for me, the whole pandemic. Uh, definitely. And I've spoken about that a little bit on here before, so I won't get into it too much, but it was a blessing. And, and I think even looking at it that way what is, a, is a good perspective to look at it because, you know, I sung poor me for too long and it did me no harm. It did me no good, you know, so. Um, Beautiful. I think the last thing, maybe last question I could ask you is, you know, generally like the process, you know, so we see like, you know, breaking down the old belief systems, reconnecting with emotions, you know, how, how does this, and, it, and I'm sure it's individual, right? It's, it's always individual. There's, you know, but aligning with your environment, align, like, you know, cleaning up your environment, I think probably has something to do with it, you know? Um, but yeah, breaking down the old belief systems that we're so ingrained with. And I think in a way it is, it is an awakening, you know, it is an awakening. Um, so maybe, if you could share uh, fostering that, how do you foster that in somebody? You know, because I think it, I think you're the right person to ask that question to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, well, good question. Um, well, first of all, what usually fosters that desire in someone, that awakening process is pain. That's what usually happens is like we, we start moving in some direction that's not life serving truly. It's not actually nourishing our soul. It's not in alignment with truth and love. And then it, it results in pain. And when the pain get, gets to a certain level after trying many things to stop that pain and to find a solution, then usually there's this shift where we turn inwards and we start to take responsibility for that pain. Um, so, of course, there'd be another way. If we start to take responsibility for our creation now and realize that the life that we're standing inside of right now is a life that we have actually chosen in many complex ways even if there's pain in it. So we've maybe chosen to follow a certain path based on certain desires and choices. Yeah, perhaps because of our subconscious that you know is full of belief systems that need to change because they're not really harmonious ones. And there's all sorts of complex reasons, but if we can realize and accept it all, both the light and the dark, so all the beautiful things that we can be grateful for in our life right now, and there's always something that we can connect to at least, and sometimes there's many things to connect to. But if we can accept that reality that all the good things that are in our world right now, as well as the bad things, are a product of our actual free will 
and our choices and desires moving forward, then we can really start to take control of our world and our future. If we take responsibility on that level, like we are the creator of our world, then we can start to really accomplish things as a creator, as a human being. Like hu human beings are super powerful. We're like the most powerful being on the planet that I'm aware of, you know, like a chicken is not going to change the world, but a human being can definitely change the world. Like, I mean, and we, we, we have the power to, um, cert, like enjoy our creative power and enjoy our life and enjoy our journey by at, while simultaneously serving humanity and bringing beautiful things into the world. So if we realize that we're the creator of our own pain in some kind of a complex way and start to become conscious so that we don't unconsciously or subconsciously create the pain, then it empowers us to consciously start creating what we have the potential to do, which is like um, providing products for humanity. You know, if you want to start your own business, coming up with new products that are going to benefit people and, and it's something you're passionate about, then you'll just love that and it'll actually be nourishing to your soul or a service of some kind. And then to also just realize that if you, if you want to experience the pleasures and joys of the world, you can, it's just like, you just got to love yourself and choose it. Like choose to do that. It's, it's our power. But if we remain unconscious to that or in denial of it or resistance to it, then we'll just experience more pain usually. Yeah, and the pain, the pain won't get better until we step into our power in that way. So I think I answered your question. I'm not sure. Yeah, perfectly, <laughs> perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, we talk a lot about responsibility here. That's number one for us is responsibility for everything that, that happens in your life. And, you know, I, I think it's it's the most helpful philosophy because the victim mindset never leads you to anything good. You know, there's no sense in, you know, I think taking on a little extra responsibility is better than, than playing a victim in, in any sense, even though it could be something that is seemingly not even related to you and your fault. You know, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's just, it's always best to take a little extra responsibility. So. Well, one of the things I say about victim experiences, cause, cause I feel like pretty much we're all victims of our childhood in some way. I mean, no one has a perfect childhood and some childhoods are pretty damaging. And anyways, I, what I say, what I, my philosophy is that yes, we are a victim of certain factors and circumstances. It's true. But now what? <laughs> now it's like, okay, well, we either take responsibility for all the damage and shit that's in, happened for it because it's inside of it's in our reality we either take responsibility for it learn everything we can from it and change it and transform it and heal it or we just remain a victim you know that's really our options and um the more people that choose to do the second thing <laughs> the more the less victims will occur in the future and yeah then life gets better right so yeah definitely awesome well i think this is a good time to kind of wrap things up so you know i i uh i'll ask you for your your final thoughts here anything that you might have missed or you want to share but i i want to share something here um you know thinking back on this conversation the idea of this this emotional root cause and that you know you can't take things on you cannot take things on that are not not your own that aren't yours to carry you know if you don't have the energetic field in the body to carry it a toxicity a, a, an emotional trauma and i'm relating this to my comment on the vicarious trauma it doesn't make sense to me and you know i've talked about i've asked the question before to previous guests you know protecting yourself from this sort of vicarious trauma or taking on other people's you know emotional um or whatever it may be mental uh phenomenon you know 
it, it doesn't make sense to, that someone could take it on unless it's within them already. You know, unless you have that unhealed part of you, I don't think you can take on anything physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, whatever it may be. And so that's my final thoughts. And now I want to ask you your final thoughts, anything you may have missed that or anything that you want to share here now before we end off. I love that. I agree. And yeah, I'd just say everyone's our mirror. We're being mirrored back all the time. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is if anyone's interested in getting into the root cause work, please join my level one training. I hold my level one training uh, about four times a year, live recorded classes, uh, six days. I teach in great detail the root cause of cancer, how our body works, why it appears. I teach the root cause of cancer in each part of the body, why breast cancer occurs, why ovarian cancer, brain cancer, etc. all the psycho-emotional themes. And I teach a 15-step um, self-healing process, which is a process that, that you can then use moving forward in life as well to navigate the challenges of life. And this process is what I feel is missing in, in you know, school, for example. Uh, and then in my level two training, I go a lot deeper into understanding childhood and our false self versus our true self, our ego, um, God, prayer. Why do sometimes people pray and not heal? Why, why can 30, 50 people pray for someone yet they don't heal? So we go deep into understanding God, prayer, um, love, what it is, um, our childhood, how it affects us today and many, many things, how to connect to our soul through art, through dance, through music, um, in really special ways, uh, special types of meditation, all kinds of stuff. My training is very, very extensive. And, um, yeah, I just want to invite anyone that wants to do the root cause work to bring this into your practice. If you're a coach, or even if you just have a passion for truth and bettering yourself, um, come, come to my training. Yeah, so I'm sure that's probably the best way that they can support you, you know, uh, and learn from you. Uh, how else can they find you? So you had the website, and uh, I know you're on Instagram too. Yeah, my website's rootcauseinstitute.com. And um, on Instagram, it's the root cause institute. Great. Yeah. yeah, we'll link that below. So Right on. Yeah, this has been... Uh, this has been profound. I think uh, this is extremely valuable and I knew it was going to be a good one at the start. I didn't know that it was going to be this good. So I really appreciate you for coming on today and all the wisdom that you were able to share with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I loved our conversation. Thanks. Thanks for having me on so I could share. Absolutely. Okay. I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, you should know that this is definitely not medical advice. <laughs> this is for your informational purposes only, right? <laughs> But also remember that we're all responsible, sovereign beings capable of thinking, criticizing, and understanding absolutely anything. We the people and the greater forces that are together, self-healers, self-governable, self-teachers, and so much more. Please reach out if you have any questions, criticism, comments, concerns. You know where to find me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, listen, guys, if you enjoyed this and found it informative in any way, give us a like, share, comment, review, whatever you're on. I'd really appreciate that. That's the best way to support us here and uh, keep this going and share it with a friend and you know the growth has, has been amazing you guys are all all really really amazing and so I appreciate every single one of you so I want you all to remember that there's two types of people in the world there's people who think they can and people who think they can't and they are both correct alright guys thanks for listening take care <laughs>